Hey everybody and welcome to a complete wild ride with Steve-O. This week we have Preston Lacey who is the only remaining OG Jackass cast member that we had not got. The Jackass puzzle is complete. And let me tell you something about this movie coming out. As the premiere approached, as I did all of the press for it, my girl got involved of trying to make me look doper. She's a stylist and she took charge and all of a sudden I see how I need to be paying more attention to looking dope all the time and why wouldn't I include my socks in that? So dude, I'm all about stance socks now. Look at these dope babies, right? It's not time to wear garbage on your feet anymore. And you know what? Stance makes all kinds of super comfortable, super soft, super quality stuff. Not just socks, but these shorts come from Stance. Man, I love them. I love them because I decided on being stylish from head to toe from here on out. And you should too. So, you want 15% off your first order from Stance? I think it would be a good idea to take me up on that. How do you get it? You go to stance.com, you use the promo code STEVO, and you enjoy 15% off your first order. You heard it from me, baby. Special treat for the Wild Ride listeners. So get on over to stance.com, use the promo code STEVO. Now, let's get into it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what? Taking it all in. <laughs> Ten, ten things I didn't know about Preston Lacey. You ever read those? Oh, no. no. It's, the net worth ones are what's hilarious. Everybody thinks we're all rich. <laughs> Not me. They, they, uh, they, they say I got $2.5 million. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> Shit, I think mine says three. <laughs> Number seven, he likes his privacy. <laughs> that is true. It's true. Uh, we're recording everywhere? Yes, sir. Oh, recording man. everywhere. Who doesn't like their privacy? What kind of <laughs> statement is that? <laughs> that was number seven. You want to hear the rest later? He likes fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, then there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Preston Lacey. Yeah, dude. Completing the jackass puzzle. The final piece, dude. You You're got the, the old seventh banana. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. And and what's really cool is that there are so many comments from people saying, wow, now you got Noxo, all you need is Preston. And then you've had everybody. Wow. Yeah. Well, the bar is set pretty high, though. I mean, it's, uh, it's I'm looking forward to it. You know, I think um, I've been trying to get you on the podcast for a long time. According to the internet, he's quite dashing these days. Who's in he? Knoxville. Yeah. Yeah, they're loving him. I'm loving him with yeah, the, the uh, Silver Fox. Yeah. Do you know about the um, the, the website thing? Uh uh-uh. Scott fucking was looking up all the Jackass guys' websites. He types in johnnyknoxville.com, finds it to be available for purchase. <laughs> <laughs> and I bought it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait until you see the, the website I built for him. I'll make it live in like another. In all those years, he didn't think to get johnnyknoxville.com. That's funny. Yeah, and, and I mean, whoever had it, it just lapsed. Or I mean, it couldn't have been available for purchase the whole time. Yeah, I have no idea. It's crazy, though. Yeah, we have no idea what window of opportunity we, we discovered that in. But he but, never owned it, right? It was never his. I, I, I don't know. Because you, when you brought up the website, he was like, I don't got a website. Like, yeah. He was like against it or something. But in any case, yeah. You, you said, uh, according to the internet, he's dashing. And that was what I thought. When, well, what am I going to build? And um, I thought it, it, a funny thing about his gray hair. So what, what I built is Knoxville pops up, like as we've known him for decades, jet black hair. He says, hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. And then dicks fly in and just come all over his head. And he's vigorously shampooing in the cum until his hair turns gray. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd be down with that. He loves it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right down his wheelhouse. Yeah, he loves it. But that's not a... What it, okay, when you met Knoxville on a television commercial audition. 
Well, there's a lot of different versions of how we met. Well, let and me tell you my version. <laughs> <laughs> because, the, 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 okay, you tell me your version, then I'll tell you the version no, no, we no. man told the New York Times. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to curb my, uh, my propensity for telling people their own stories and my version of it. No, I'm real, real, real quick, tell me your version of it. I mean, I just know that, that uh, he met on an audition for a commercial, and, and he had the idea to try to eat 50 eggs, and he said, oh, hey, man, I'm doing this thing. I think you'd be great for it. His uh, ex-wife owned a clothing company, and I had met her through another friend, and she had me haul uh, uh, clothing supplies, you know, yards of, of uh, what do you call that? Not, uh, uh, material. Textile? Yeah, textile stuff around to where there was sewing and everything, and we had big loads. She would, uh, big loads, that's funny. She would uh, have Knoxville come with me, and we just started visiting stuff. You know, he started telling me about this show and everything, and I told him the show sounds horrible and stupid and violent. I said, you and I should do like a, you know, Leno you know, McMahon thing right there, you know, let's do it. And he goes, let's, he goes, let's try this. Then if this doesn't work, we'll try something else, you know? And wow. so he had me write him ideas and I wrote him like 10 ideas. And he said, you're going to do all these ideas. So the, the joke about how Jackass was written by Preston Lacey was founded in truth. <laughs> Not really. I was when I was a writer in the beginning. Yeah. Where, where did that come from? Like somebody said, Oh, who comes up with the ideas? And the answer was Preston Lacey writes. It was on the IMDB <laughs> back when IMDB was just beginning out and starting. Who, who, who uh, was that quote from? Was it Wee Man said Preston Lacey? Uh, Chris writes did. Chris Pius did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Preston Lacey. Right. And then that just, everybody started saying it in all the interviews. So good. But I tell you, that has not opened any doors across the world. <laughs> that and a bus pass will get you on the bus. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what, what were some Jeez. of those original ideas that you wrote? Gosh, I, I, I would have to. Me chasing Wee Man for sure. That's one of my and, favorite um, bits. Oh, the pee pee guy where I peed myself. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that one. I have to, geez, it's so hard to remember now. It's been so. Jeff said, I love your idea, but you've got to convince Wee Man to do it. And he's kind of hard to convince and stuff. I didn't know him. So I had to tell Wee Man, the first day I met him, this is what we're going to do, get in our underpants and go through West Hollywood chasing each other around. And he was like, that might be funny. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's so funny. I wonder if, uh, if Jeff Tremaine pitched it to him, if, if, if he would have been. I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, like would he have been less receptive if, yeah. if it came from someone else? Right. Maybe. But when you said you were hauling stuff, that's because you were driving a truck. A you... pickup truck then. Just, yeah. I just, I swear, I did for extra money when I first moved to California is I hauled uh, furniture and you just do odd jobs and stuff and a pickup truck. So you didn't meet Knox on an audition? No, I met him through uh, uh, Beautiful Jason, the guy who uh, shot him uh, with a taser. Yeah. Yeah, that's who I, I met him. All right. Yeah, but then also, I said so many stupid things in interviews, and they, they, they caught on. I said that I went to an open audition with 500 people, and I ate a whole bunch of bananas with the peels on, and that's when they hired me on the spot. Oh, and you went yeah. to an open audition for Jackass? Yeah, with 500 different contestants. That's, and so that's what I had heard. It was like an open <laughs> casting call. That you know how crazy that would be if they did right. that? How nuts that, that, that would was, That's my version. The sadomasochist. Ah! <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, all right, now, break your finger. Yeah, like. <laughs> right. Wow. So, so, so you thought it was a, a horrible, terrible idea, but that's just Knoxville describing it. You hadn't seen like the no. Then the that video. was before I'd seen any video at right. all. You know, and then he asked me right around that same time. He wanted me to run and run him, drive over him with my truck. You know, run him, run him over. Wow. And I wouldn't do it, but the only reason I wouldn't do it is because I didn't have another truck, and he didn't have the money to replace my truck, you know? And I used it to make a living, to, to, you know, just to barely, I could barely make a living. As it was, 1998, I lived in Los Angeles, and I made $12,000. $12,000. And that was how, dri from driving the pickup yeah. truck? Yeah, and it's like, how did you even make it? You know what I mean? So, so there's no truth to the audition story? Did you ever, uh, like, uh, audition for commercials or... No, uh -uh. I've never so, been in a commercial with Johnny Knoxville. So my ever. version's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You've never been in any commercials? <laughs> no, I've been in a bunch of commercials, just none with him. Okay. None with Johnny Knoxville. He's so you were like, yeah, you were like becoming an actor. Yeah. When you first got yeah, the I want to be an actor. I was on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno um, for almost two years doing the skits they do at the beginning oh, of the cool. show. Yeah. I did a lot of skits on there. Damn, nice. That's man. a legit yeah. gig. Now, I've been super candid. I've always spoken up uh, about how, for the first season of Jackass, I made less than 1500 bucks. <laughs> oh, yeah, same. Oh, uh, yeah, like... Yeah. I think that Bam <coughs> did like really well because he, he kind of came in as a producer. Like he had the whole CKY thing going. 
I was, uh, it was like a 250 or 300 per stunt. And we went to Florida where I met you and I came back and I had like 15 stunts. And Trip Taylor called me in and said, we have made a change. It's now three stunts for 300 bucks. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and. Oh, I, well, by then it was the second season. Yeah. You got paid per stunt on the second oh, season. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ah, uh, then you got yeah. screwed because they, uh. <laughs> we all got screwed. Well, we right, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, um. You know, after the second season, or I'm sorry, after the first season aired, and I'd made the per stunt bit, but then they paid me two thousand per episode on the second season and the third season. Did they pay you up front or just like on a week? Like before? half up front. Wow. And and so after taxes, um, I half up front was uh, ten thousand bucks. No, if I didn't go on the road with you, I would I wouldn't have been able to make it. You know, Man. that's the well, don't try this at home tour. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I had a job driving a limousine at that time. And I had a, a, a took some people out on the town, had a great time, went great. And then all of a sudden, they called and said, "Hey, um, we noticed that that was one well, of the guys from Jackass on there. We thought we were going to be pranked. We'd like our money back." And my boss is like, "You are fired. You can't do this. No way." And I was like, "I had a great, great service. Had a good time." But they just started thinking about it, and we're like, "Wait a minute. <laughs> we can get this whole thing for free, you know?" Oh so, damn! So I was fired from the limousine business. Called some porn people around though. That was pretty interesting. Oh yeah, because I go out to the airport and pick them up, and they're just bright eyed and bushy tailed. And you go and they spend a week in Hollywood, usually like five days. Then that limousine ride back to go to Ohio or Michigan was a sad deal. <laughs> they had the look of shame. <laughs> yeah, it's the look of shame. And they also do two fifty three hundred per stunt. <laughs> 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 kind of in the same same pay league there. So Steve's tour, did you go to Preston and say like, hey man, I'm putting together this tour, you want to come on? Or like, how did that come together? Well, I asked him to go on tour for sure, 100% of that. It was, um, I mean, the, the the old tour started with the this shady rave promoter who uh, invited me to come out to a party with Bam and Wee Man. And then like, it just turned into like me being an attention horn doing stunts. And then he was like, oh, we'll make a show out of this. And... <laughs> We started booking the show, and uh, clearly the Shady Rave promoter guy thought it was a more saleable show if it was more guys from Jackass. Sure. So I don't think that you even got an opportunity to ask to come on because Dunlap was looking for people to uh, to recruit. And so the, most of those tours would be the two of you, uh, Dunn and Wee Man? I mean, it was, it was always me and then two other guys from Jackass. Okay. And dude, check this out. The, the story that I got, that we all got, I think, was that, that the, our old Don't Try This at Home tour was, was uh, sold for a lump sum of 10000 bucks, And, and, and uh, I got 3000 bucks. Each of the other two jackass guys that were on the show got 1500 bucks a piece. So that takes you to 6000 And then the story was, well, they got to pay for airplanes and hotels and everything. But whatever's left over after that... Uh, Dunlap gets to keep. Mm -hmm. That's the shady promoter guy. Yeah. Now there is a. There, I mean, we call him a shady. I think he would have called himself a shady promoter guy. I've been proud know, of it. Yeah. yeah, very proud of it. Mm -hmm. But you know, we definitely never got any money for merch, and there was like, mm -hmm. there was merch flying all over the place, and we didn't see any of that. And now that I've been touring for like a lot of years I kind of understand it a little bit better like you don't get you don't sell a show for a lump sum you get a percentage of the door and we were doing shows that had like there were there was definitely I remember a show that had 3,000 people oh yeah for sure thousands of people you don't sell you don't you don't sell thousands of tickets for 10,000 bucks lump sum right, <laughs> so, right how much for ticket prices usually at your shows I mean it was 20 bucks right yeah so gosh, Ohio was on the side of that hill or mountain out there. Thousands of people there. Yeah. That's, so so I'm thinking in retrospect <laughs> that, you know, like I got 3000 bucks, you know, Preston got 1500 bucks, like whoever else got 1500 bucks. But I'm not even mad about that because had I been making that kind of money back then, it wouldn't have been good for me, I don't think. Mm. Oh, no. Uh -uh. Yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. Man. But, Hey, have you have you uh, heard from him at all? I ran into him at a bar or something in L.A. He was completely super nice. I had know? the best conversation with him not long ago. You know, he was just talking. To, I asked him about how that all worked and stuff. He said it was just a fax machine business. He said you just sent faxes and waited for him to come in. 
you know, to the different venues and stuff. Right, you right, know? right. You send out faxes and get faxes back in. I mean, to be fair, nobody, like, in the legitimate entertainment industry wanted to fuck with me or any of us, you know? Oh. Like, that. this this <laughs> rave promoter was, like, the best we were going to sure. get. And, you know, to his credit, he carted us all over the damn world, man. He made oh, a yeah. big deal out of us. Some places you'd want to go, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys went to Europe. You, you did all sorts of Dude, shit. Yeah. extensive tours in Europe. Yeah. One of my favorite things was when I was uh, in Amsterdam swallowing... Uh, a condom full of weed to smuggle it into Switzerland. Ah, the old days when I didn't give a crap about my body. Man, have things changed. These days, I want to know everything that's going on with my body so I can take care of myself. And that's why I got my Whoop Band. People who have been really paying attention to this podcast for a long time have certainly heard me talk about it. But now we've got the Whoop Strap 4.0 with the completely waterproof charger that just slides right on. Man, the technology is off the charts. Now my Whoop Strap is monitoring my blood oxygen, my skin temperature, and it can be haptically set to let me know when I've recovered enough, when it's time to get out of bed. Hey, you've gotten enough sleep. Too much sleep is dangerous, man. Ah, oh, dude. And you want to hear about sleep? Well, every single day, it's telling me, like, the precise percentage of my sleep which was spent in REM sleep. How many disturbances, time in bed, all stages, man. Plus, it tells me how many calories I burned, like what activities I'm doing. If I get on a bicycle, ride the bicycle, it knows that. It's like, hey, man, good job cycling. You burned this many calories. Dude, it's amazing, man. The most sophisticated fitness tracking device on earth. And I love it. And if you sign up for a membership, then in your new customer, you get the device totally free with the waterproof charger, everything. And by using the promo code Stevo at whoop.com, that's W H O O P.com, you get 15% off your membership plus the device for free. I'm telling you, it is the thing to be wearing, man. So go to whoop.com, use the promo code Stevo, and get 15% off your membership and the device for free for new members. It's a killer deal. Now let's talk about drug smuggling. And you're sitting there. I got in the weed and I plop it in my mouth and I just swallowed it down. And you said, well, you can just swallow that that easy? Sucking all that park dick paid off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen that clip. <laughs> the best. Then you choked. I, but I, I choked Oh, was that a different, that was a different, was a different time? time because I because I barfed up that one on stage in Switzerland. <laughs> so I had to re redo it because my idea was to poop it out. Damn. So Preston, did this become like a big like issue for you that like I'm a famous guy in TV, but like I still need to work, I need jobs and shit. Like I'm oh, losing yeah, the absolutely. limo job. Was it happening yeah. with other things too? Like absolutely, yeah. It just had to do scrap and you know try to do, make a living until uh, it wasn't until I guess to be the the last block of the series that we did there they started paying a little more money, you know. Uh huh. And then the movie, you know, that was yeah. it, which was Schedule F or whatever the union minimum is, you know. And what's the connection though with Sam Macaroni, because you guys were roommates at the time, right? Were you and Sam roommates? Yeah, uh, we met through uh, Clifton Collins Jr., an actor, friend of yeah. ours. Oh, yeah. And uh, just became instant friends. You know, you gotta got love Macaroni. He's funny. Yeah. I just knew immediately how funny he is. And then you met Macaroni through Preston? Absolutely. I, I met Macaroni through Preston, and Macaroni and I were just thick as thieves right away. We were, <laughs> we were, we were, we managed to be each other's lower companions. <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> I think I was perhaps the lower companion because I always made it to work. No matter, like, it, 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 even if we were on a days long bender, I always made it to work regardless of what shape I was in. Mm -hmm. Macaroni never made it anywhere. He'd be like, dude, I've <laughs> got to be somewhere. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, come on, man. We're going to go back and, and get more of this or that. Never made it. <laughs> and then you guys all did TV the movie together, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that was, was the Preston's three of you? Yeah, that was, that was all me there. Well, 
letting macaroni direct, I guess. Damn. So tell me about that. You just had kind of like maybe from doing the sketches with Leno or something, you had sketch ideas and you were like, let's let's make a movie of sketches? Yeah, we had gotten a gig on National Lampoon's Pledge This, a Paris Hilton vehicle. Wow. <laughs> yeah, where we played uh, her brothers in a small role. And one of the shady producers from that, we hit up to do a movie and he was like, yeah, I can get you that one Carlos guy. He was like, yeah, I can get you guys. And I ended up getting like $2.3 million or something for that movie. And I couldn't, uh, couldn't believe it. Yeah. I mean, there was all kinds of like messed up stuff going on on, on the finances. of that Oh movie. yeah. Just all just completely shady, illegal on all sorts of levels. And I remember too, like uh, by that point I actually had gotten an agent and like I presented my, I was like, yeah, they're giving me points on this movie. And, and uh, <laughs> the agent was like, I'm sorry to tell you, but those aren't real points. <laughs> and I was like, wait, like a point's a point, right? Like, well, the definition of a point here is meaningless. <laughs> Plus, it's still like um, 1.7 million in the red. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, dude, that movie had its moments. It yeah. was an overall pile of garbage, but it really had some, some great moments in it. People, <laughs> when people bring it up, it's like with reverence, you know, like it, it's kind of a cult classic. If you saw it, and you were, you know, the right age at the right time. Those well, there's people cult love classics it. and there's TV the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, they sold the international rights before we even had the script done. For sure. That was how they make the money, you know. They just, people did the, and you never saw a dime from it? Oh, uh -uh. We got sued even over it. <laughs> you yeah. got sued yeah. personally. Yeah, no, we got sued. I, I, I can't mention any names, of course, but a guy sued us uh, uh, wanting a writing credit on there. A guy who we had helped us write, uh, come help us uh, Typist. Is oh my making. God, that's the last thing. If it was like we surveyed a hundred people, like I would not have said anybody sued for credit. For that. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, so he so, so he, so, so he sued, page. and we had to go to court and be deposed and all this, and he ended up winning, um, which he won a credit on the writing credit on National Lampoon's TV the movie, and he <laughs> had to pay had to pay his attorneys, you know, to, for that stuff. They wow. Said, they said it must have been seventy five. So you can have Steve O's useless points. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll give you those. So he was getting. <laughs> you win the all the debt that the movie is in. Yeah, exactly. My buddy Mick was cutting his hair at Floyd's barber shop, and that guy who sued, and the guy started dropping names. How he's a big Hollywood writer, and Mick goes, "I need to tell you that not only did my buddy Preston write that movie, he goes, I'm in it." <laughs> the guy was bragging about writing a movie that he was in. It's really so wow. Funny. So you're saying that the guy didn't actually write it? No, he wrote. I, I think I did write one bit or something in there. Yeah, but he really fell apart with the horrible things he said on those emails in the deposition. Just, oh. just, just, just racist stuff and stuff. It was oh. like wow. Like Jeez. when they start reading that stuff out loud, it's just like that dude's dead. You know, damn, yeah, dead meat. Did you ever do any other like writing, like you know, scripted stuff like that? Oh, Lucky Cucumber, another <laughs> horrible macaroni <laughs> movie. Yeah, I had a little run there of, of bad independent films. What's Lucky Cucumber about? Um, uh, this uh, guy stars Dean Bahar from Basketball. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Is that was that like little bitch? Yes, in, yes, okay. yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's him. Uh, he uh, wins the lottery and is like goes from poor to rich and then loses all of his money. Okay. It was just a, a cheap thing that we shot. That was one where. Uh, another friend of that some guy Macaroni met said his dad was really wanting to invest in a, an independent movie, so we sent him a horrible script, <laughs> and I um, taped uh, four hundred thousand dollar candy bars to the back page, and he said he was eating those candy bars and said I'll give these guys that four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> 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 Tell us about uh, when you when you were acting in a movie with Patrick Swayze. Oh, um, Christmas in Wonderland. Yeah, I had a Christmas movie where I played a criminal. Uh, with I played Chris Kattan's brother, okay. and uh, we uh, rob uh, Patrick Swayze's kids from of their money in the movie. It is a big flop, but it was sure fun to make. And, and I remember you just saying like the greatest things about Patrick Swayze. He was, I hung out with him every night and spent a lot of time. We were sitting there, I was sitting there with Patrick Swayze, and I said, because we started to be buddies, and I said, it's a shame we could never get you on our show to be work with Chris, and he goes, what are you talking about? He goes, I would have loved to have been on that. 
And I, I said, no, we went repeatedly to your agents. And he goes, I'm going to call him. He goes, because they sure as heck never went to me. And it was wow. like, man, these darn agents, just because mm-hmm. it's no money, won't do it, you know? Shit. And right. it's just like, it would have been, it could have brought him back. You know what I mean? Could have been great for his career. Brought yeah. him back? I don't know. I didn't know that he had a... They call this Christmas movie that he did his comeback because he had such a gap in his, in his movie. Patty Swayze? So, yeah. And then he ended up doing a, one like horror series after that. Then he did yeah, Ghost. He got, he got, oh, this is before. The ghost after, was a long yeah. time ago. There's a big gap. There, yeah, yeah, for your sure. timeline is all. Yeah. Yeah, Super nice like guy, though. Too. Yeah. yeah. Super nice. But how'd you get along with Chris Kattan? Real good, real good. He was great. And Carmen Electra, too. Mm. She was awesome. Carmen Electra. Yeah. She was awesome. We went and to see uh, Sting play at a big football stadium and they said Sting is backstage and he wants to meet you so I walk up there Sting wanted to meet uh, uh, us so uh-huh. it's Carmen Electra Chris Kattan Patrick Swayze and me and Sting goes I know you and pointed right at me and walks up there and says he's like, hey, a big jackass fan wow. I couldn't believe it and Chris Kattan was like I was in a skit with him on Saturday Night Live <laughs> he didn't even say anything he comes up to your fat ass <laughs> <laughs> All right. wow that's funny, man. It's good times up there, though. To this, uh, to this day, uh, uh, when that's on the thing, when the Edmonton Eskimos score a touchdown, I yell "Touchdown Eskimos" on the big jumbotron with footage yeah. and audio. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah dude, epic Eskimo. <laughs> You're a huge uh, Chiefs fan, huh? Yeah, like I went to eleven games this last season. Wow, Kansas City yeah. Royals too. Yeah, but I haven't been going as much that just because right. I thought we were going to be busy all last fall. And it ended up I had a lot of free time. <laughs> right. So I went, to, I went to a game in Vegas and one in L.A. It was neat stadiums. Yeah. Um, what, uh, like, with, with 10 years in between Jackass 3D and Jackass Forever, like, what was your main thing that, that you were doing? I know you were doing stand-up, and I love that. And uh, I ate a lot. <laughs> yeah, I did stand up as, as much as I could, and uh, I was the last one to to hold hope that we were going to do another movie after everybody. And then finally, you know, like five years ago, I gave up. You know, so then I was just been I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was thinking about starting a business of some sort. You know, do yeah. something just just to have, you know have something to do. Just so I'd sit around all day. What kind of business would you start? I don't know. You know, just. Uh, a restaurant or something, you know? No. What was the bit supposed to be when you shit your pants? You know, there's something about us jackass guys is our work ethic, man. I believe in working hard and playing even harder. And I just got home for a two-day break from tour, and I'm getting ready to play really hard. You know how hard? I'm about to chomp on two Blue Chew tablets. Man, I'm so excited that it says chew one to two tablets by mouth 30 to 45 minutes before sexual activity. And I'm getting ready for some sexual activity right now. But maybe you're wondering, what are these Blue Chew tablets? Well, they are chewable tablets, which happen to be delicious and which have the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except it's only a fraction of the price. And you may have heard that that active ingredient is a lot of fun because it gives you a serious boner, and what you heard is true. So I want you to know that you can have a whole lot of fun if you get on this. And you might be thinking, but... Don't I need a prescription to get these tablets? And yeah, you do. But you don't have to go to an awkward in-person doctor visit. No, no, no. You go to bluechew.com and you consult with one of their medical providers right on the site. Couldn't be more simple, easy, and quick. And then the tablets are on your way. Now here's the good news. If you use the promo code Stevo at BlueChew.com, you get an entire month's supply of these babies completely for free. All you got to pay is five bucks for shipping. Oh man, talk about a good deal. Talk about a good time. Head on over to BlueChew.com. And use the promo code Stevo for an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. You and your boner are gonna thank me. Now, let's get back to this. 
the what do you call it dirty dancing where uh, it was meant to be where i would go and jump off of a crate and platform yeah and wee man was to hold me up like oh. dancing style that was the whole bit that's yeah all, that's all yeah. it's supposed to not be not the other way around huh uh-huh. and then like you know <laughs> that's the, the third, funniest part of the, the movie the dude. third take my stomach really started hurting. Oh wait, third take. Well, yeah, because of me smashing him. Not not the third take of me pooping. The third take right. of me j- jumping on him. You know, trying to get it just right. And, and so that didn't make the cut. It just wasn't. There was. It right. wasn't worth it. You know. Right. But the shitting. Man. And and he was he was hating it. He was he was he was, he was the happiest person in the world pants. that I shit. So he didn't have to keep getting <laughs> smashed. He was so happy with that. Yeah. He could. He was just ecstatic. Yeah. Man, we men went for it. You know. I mean, I guess he, like you guys had like a, a bunch of bits that were pretty brutal. You and we, man, they, they, they were all in a couple of days. Yeah, they filmed them all at the same time. The uh, what, what, what do you call the pendulum thing? We smash is what I've called, but I don't know what it's yeah. called. Was that, that when him, a, with him and Zach jumped at the same time? That was a triple wedgie. Yeah. That was pretty gnarly. No, we all three got banged up on that smash thing. They just yeah. said it was too close to the triple wedgie, the yeah. triple wedgie which is just. Oh. So, oh, so you didn't use the the Wii Smash? Huh? It, it's uh, there, there's a bunch coming out in 4.5. Yeah, 4.5 is loaded. Okay, I wonder cool. why 4.5 when Paramount has uh, Paramount Plus, it's their own streaming thing. They sold 4.5 to Netflix for money. I mean, I'm sure they they, yeah. they didn't they didn't hurt themselves. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Maybe it's on like a time they only have it for so long and then it'll default to Paramount Plus. Oh, I wow, assure you that Paramount's like, "Boy, they got the best of us." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so so will Jackass forever go to Netflix as well? No. Paramount Plus has uh, first rights on forever. Okay? It'll go to Paramount Plus first and then be able to rent on other streaming sites. Whoa. And then they're saying in 2024, Paramount is going 100% streaming their stuff only. Like, mm-hmm. they, won't, they won't let you go anywhere else. So I don't know how that affects the future. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Do you guys have a favorite bit from Jackass Forever? That, that was my next question, but of all time. Your oh. favorite bit of all time. My favorite bit of all time with me in it is the Wee Man and I bungee thing in Florida. Over the water? Yeah, over yeah. the water. That's. Did you write that one? No, Bam did. Oh, they right. Bam, yeah, you drew Bam it on the napkin. That. That's yeah, right. Yeah, and faxed it in. Yeah. So funny. That's your favorite. What about one that you're not in? Um, well, I guess I'm in that too. What am I saying? I was going to say Dark Room. I have the new one. Oh, my God. That's so, good, so you know? funny. Yeah. Were you great. really shaking like that? Oh, it was, yeah. here's the deal. So in there, it is terrifying. I mean, it's, it's, it's terrifying as it could be. But then you start thinking, you know, you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> They're not going to let that snake in here only because we could hurt the snake. They're not going to take a risk of us hurting a damn snake. No way. We don't do that. You know, so then it's like, well, wait a minute. No snake. What are they going to do? And then it got just worse. It was worse. It was like, where's the snake? I want the snake. You know, because yeah. you're a like, you know, PJ's in there somewhere, you know. And so when they knocked over to the, uh, the snake, did you yeah. think the snake was really on the ground somewhere? No. no. Preston was, uh, but everybody else legit did. Zach definitely thought there was a rattlesnake going on. And he definitely thought he got bit. I thought, I thought, boy, Chris sure seems awful eager to take a cookie off a rattlesnake's head with that. Like, that part was just a given. They're like, yeah, Chris is going to go blah, blah, And it's like, what, what are you? <laughs> right. He was, like, not even worried about it. He was yeah, like, yeah, I'll just yeah. do that. So just sit here and watch. I, I can see Chris being not too worried about that. But I fell for it. I'm hook, line, and sinker. I don't for sure. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, and when that so door scary. shut, it was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's funny because on the, on the movie... Like you see, you guys jumped when the door shut because it seems so loud, but the audio wasn't that loud. So I was, it, it, was it just a fucking loud steel door that yeah. just slammed shut, and you exactly. guys were like, oh no! And it was deep in the basement of this old college, you know, way down. You just kept going downstairs and downstairs and downstairs. I think <laughs> your gnarliest bit for me is uh, the field goal. Where oh, the, yeah. right to the face. Yeah, that was fucking heavy, dude. Yeah, that was a big one. Was that one take? Two takes. Okay. Did he get you the first time? And it blew by my ear. Uh. And it's the only time Knoxville ever came up and put his hand on me. And he goes, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> it's the only time he's ever done that. That football whizzed by my ear so fast. It's like, oh, shit. And I said, man, you, I said, dude, you can't miss again. And he goes, I will not miss. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't. It was uppercut, though. Uh, on the set of Jackass 3D, there was like... Uh, like famously like a no drinking rule like we're gonna like respect steve-o's sobriety and uh like 
you your breaking of that rule was was perfectly appropriate every time. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> like, and like so in what president would be pre- sneaking pre- drinks. Pre- president was just like, hey man, look, I'm about to take a football to the face. I'm I'm gonna need to have a couple drinks, you know, <laughs> and like super respectful. I was never mad at once, you know. I only and, got in trouble once on the uh, walk the plank. Bro, I, you got in trouble I, for that? Yeah, I got in trouble for drinking on that one. Yeah. Wow. That one was funny because like. It just didn't knock you off, right? You're just stuck up there still. <laughs> yeah, that was really, that like really it didn't work funny. or something. Yeah, yeah. It, should, it should have been stronger to blow me off of there. So funny. And then yeah. how was that cannon to the to the stomach in the opening sequence? That wasn't as as bad as the one in the. Oh, you mean on forever? That, yeah, the, uh, yeah, that was pretty rough. Because then you had a bruise on another oh, bit the later. Yeah, cannon. Yeah, yeah. But they, but they only showed the bruise, right? They didn't even show. Yeah, you no, the it's, it's, they showed Jeff getting shot with a damn gun and didn't show me. Oh well. Right. Oh, but you do you do get shot with the cannon in the and, intro in the opening scene yeah. of Jackass, 3D. and then later you see that no, big well forever, forever. In both in both movies. Steve uh, was right. Yeah. Okay, and uh, pirate in three, and then uh, in forever, I'm green. I'm Pontius's dick. Oh, oh yeah, 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 right, 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 right. And then you're like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, not that's a speed bag. Yeah. yeah. We're sitting oh there in a, one of those writing meetings, and they start talking about that. Knoxville wrote that idea, and it's like, yeah, we need somebody with balls that really hang down, and every face in that thing turns on me, and it's like, oh, no. Dude, yeah, because dude, my balls hang ridiculously far down. Yeah, no, I yeah, really, they drip good. Yeah. So you've definitely had some cold water a couple times, and if they drip down, right? Um, in the toilets, I mean? Um, you just don't hang low if you haven't hit the what? water. Uh, that, uh, yeah. if you, you hit, you hit water. Every now and then, yeah. It depends on if it's low flow or not. It depends on I the height of the water. I think I've hit water. It's, I, it's, it's, a, it's a shock. But it's, it sounds, it's a shock to it the sounds like maybe your balls actually hang a little lower than mine. But if you watch the footage on Let's that. Have a look. The yeah, first time they hung down nice, and then the second time they didn't want to go down. Uh, they no, like, survival <laughs> mode. Yeah, yeah. They're like, uh-uh, no yeah. way. I was glad, though, that they kept in like. That you did it once, and Tremaine being like, yeah. "You got to do it again." Like, that's what, that's what I that like bit that kind was. of shit. Yeah, that that bit was less about the balls and more about Tremaine being the evil guy who always makes you do another take. Yeah, but that sure wasn't a surprise that they want to do another take. Right, 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 know? right. That's that. That's part for the course. It Is was there... one of those though where I got shot with a, a volleyball on a bungee cord to the face. They called the kissing booth. Yeah, man, it hurt. I mean, it's sh- 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 major smack the face. And then Jeff goes, "Come here and look." And Steve-O's hand is in front of the camera. Right there. And he was like, we gotta do it. He goes, we gotta do it again. I'm so sorry. It's like, ah, oh. I didn't even know. I don't know. I don't know that what story. Bit, what bit was that? Is it, the kissing booth. I, just, I think it was a 3.5 or something like oh, that. Oh fuck. Yeah. It, it, it was a. Uh, it was certainly a uh, phantom camera bit. Yeah. Did you ever have a bit you backed out of? Sadly, I have to admit that there have been times, even recently, when I backed out of eating nutritious, healthy food. And on those days, thank God for Athletic Greens, man, because just one scoop of this stuff just loads you up with 75 different vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. I'm telling you, man, this stuff is delicious. It fills in the gaps in your diet. You can have it on a completely empty stomach first thing in the morning, and it's basically all the nutrition you need all day long. This is going to help with your gut health, with your anti-aging needs, with your mind focus, and with just the diet that you're not necessarily getting right every day. Athletic Greens, baby. It's where it's at. And you know I got a killer deal for you. You go to athleticgreens.com slash stevo and they're going to give you five free travel packs with your daily dose in each pack plus an entire year supply of immunity boosting vitamin D. Yeah, baby, don't turn down this deal and don't turn your back on your health. Go to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo and enjoy a whole year's supply of vitamin D for free, five travel packs, and man, it's delicious. So let's get back to this. Oh, tons of bits. Uh, really? Back Anyone you regret? The one I uh, regret? No, uh, <laughs> hell no. Uh, the one where they were, there was... 
Mentos and soda pop or and Diet Coke yeah. where they were throwing around in that room. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. wanted there's something about that that just got me. Why? I was I figured I was just gonna slip on that stuff. It looked slippery and like a knee breaker. And I just I told Jeff I didn't want to do it. I was too, I was scared to do that bit for some reason. You're know talking about we, right? when they all just went in a room and just started throwing them on the ground. Yeah. You just didn't want to do yeah. that bit. And it ended up not even being that gnarly of a bit. It know? wasn't that gnarly. Everybody yeah. was afraid of that one. Yeah, I just I just didn't want anything to do with that bit. When did they figure out that you we're afraid of heights. On the, the uh, Porter Party, yeah, King Kong bit. I wrote that King Kong bit for Chris because he'd played King Kong a couple times. And we get there and they're like, all right, paint Preston up. He's getting him up there. And I was like, what? Chris? Was that like a secret you kind of kept? Like you don't want them to know yeah, you how don't tell them stuff like that. Yeah. You tell them that you'd like it. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Like when... Uh, the first thing you do is go up when you... The first day, I walked right up and started petting snakes. <laughs> Boom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I made sure of that. that I mean, dude, brilliant. like, like uh, I, I had this thing where, where for Jackass Forever, I was like, you know, um, Ryan Dunn put the toy car up his butt because I backed out of it. Mm-hmm. And now I think it's like symbolic and out of like respect of, of like Dunn's memory since he, he can't do it, he's not here. I want to put something massive up my butt for Ryan, you know, like, and so I go, I come to Jeff Tree and I'm like, dude, I want to put, like, I want to really put something spectacular at my butt. No chance. Mm. Because I wanted to do it. You're too eager, yeah. <laughs> yeah, too eager. Like, uh, and only Je- Jeff Tremaine's only interested in forbidden buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he likes the chase. Like, if you come off too desperate, it's not right. fun for him. Like with the hog with the apple up your ass. Well, I wrote that. I, yeah. <laughs> I wrote that for a horse, though. <laughs> when I wrote it, it was, they replaced the horse with a pig. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah I like that. So when's the last time you performed stand-up? But, uh, years, before COVID. Okay. Yeah. So uh, at least two two years, almost three. And you're going to perform tonight? A, f- a few minutes. Yeah. Exciting. I don't know, I just, I, you do get rusty. You know, I'm abs- you absolutely. It's, you, you get your flow, you know. Um. Now, uh, Scott told me something earlier today that we were talking about bus drivers, and you were like, "Oh shit, I'll drive the bus." Is that like? Well, I mean, we should try that for for a leg or something. I mean, dude, I would love that. I, I would I would love that like so much. And uh, you drove the the truck that I was duct taped to in uh, the gnarly. In the, yeah, the, for the mm-hmm. opening sequence of gnarly, and. For the opening sequence of the bucket list special, I'm gonna do another thing, and and and, and I was thinking for you to drive the bus for that. I drove us home from the parachute thing too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how about that, man? Oh, yeah. you drove the RV and home. And it never went skyjacking. above 65. It was like the best driving I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, we came back. We were like editing on a big desktop yeah. computer in the RV. Oh wow! <laughs> no, that yeah. would be fun. That would be fun. Let's let's, let's do that. For a while. Yeah, you think you could it. drive something like this? Is it just like I used to drive 18 wheelers? 18 wheelers? Yeah, I, yeah. This is nothing. How how long at a time would you drive the 18 wheelers? You mean like by the days by, or by the hour? Like uh, oh, you're only allowed to drive 10 hours. 10 at hours. A time. Yeah. Professional. Yeah, that was test number one. You passed. Yeah, and I, and I remember when we were driving to the the Colorado Springs in there, and you, you were mentioning something to me about like, oh, this is a certain percentage angle, Scott. You can keep going a little bit faster. I was like, oh shit, this is next level. You know about some stuff. Just riding those those darn trucks. Yeah, it's a lot different though. Now, when I drove trucks, though, there was no satellite radio, there was no GPS, there was no cell phones. There's Thomas guys. And, and yeah, I had a big Rand McNally Rand McNally map. You know, it's so different now. Big well, fistful of quarters. One thing's the same is CBs are still super yeah. valuable, huh? Oh, that's a big thing. What was yeah. your CB name? I did come up with tons of different. Uh, I use Pony Express a lot, <laughs> which is the name of a whiskey from back in the in the seventies that my grandpa drank. Yeah, yeah, like a real like cheap whiskey. And it's just like Pony Express. To- yeah, this is the Pony Express. Which is based on the mail route from St. Joseph, Missouri to the west, to San Francisco. Yeah. Back in the 1830s. And how long did you do uh, big rigs for? I think I drove um, between 350,000 and 400,000 miles. Shit. Yeah, a lot of driving, a lot of runs from California to Canada. Running dope? <laughs> Grapes. <laughs> Grapes. Grapes? Oh, yeah. dude, that reminds me of the time <laughs> you were on TMZ for getting busted with weed. Here in Oklahoma. Here in Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 
<coughs> I had a, a rental cabin at the lake here in Oklahoma, and I went down there and <laughs> made a glass of chocolate milk, and I smoked a joint, and I laid down and go to bed. And I didn't think anything about it. I'd done it before a hundred times. And boom, 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 someone knocking on the door. Boom, boom, boom. And I thought it was just one of the neighbors wanting to go fishing or something. And I said, you know, leave me alone. I'm sleeping. There's like boom, boom, boom. I'm like, well, shit, someone's, you know, pretty serious about this. So I go up there, I open the door, and it's a cop. And he's just screaming, where's your wife? Where's your wife? And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not married. I don't have a wife. He goes, where's your woman? You need to tell me right now. And I'm like, I don't have a, a woman at all. I don't know. What do you mean? He goes, can I look? And I said, heck yeah, come in here. You know, I don't know what you're looking for. So he goes in there. He looks to this little bitty cabin. You know, it's like the size of this. And he's like, all right, here's the deal. Um, she's not here. Uh... You look stoned. It smells like weed in here. Where's your weed? And I go, here you go, sir. Hand him this little bag of weed. And he was like, okay, you need to put your hands behind your back. You know, we were take take you into the county jail. And it turned out that a guy had been robbing Dollar General stores, and he beat up his wife. And she called the cops on him and told him that they were in the wrong cabin. She listed the wrong Fuck. cabin. They went to my cabin by accident. Fuck. And they came down there and arrested me for weed. And I go down there to the jail, and uh, <laughs> you thought Elvis Presley walked in that jail. I was getting standing applause and everything. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> they it said uh, I thought well I'll just get a bail bondsman uh, so I don't have to have anybody come down there to get me it'd be easy and that bail bondsman came and he had my paperwork there he had my picture and everything on there and he goes I'm not going to bail you out because I don't think you would come back he goes I'm afraid you would just run and he folded that paper up and put it in his pocket and 10 minutes later I was on TMZ 10 wow. minutes is what that took from that guy that bail bondsman was like, oh, shit. thank you <laughs> which who knows what that pays for me I'm you know see celebrity by 50 ah, bucks. That's something, though. <laughs> I, I'm trying to follow that. So he said he thought you were a flight risk. Yeah. He but, goes, most but, people who did this got busted for a bag, a bag of weed in Oklahoma would just wouldn't come back. You know Because what I mean? he knew he can report it to TMZ and make more money. But then, but, but why not double dip? Why not get the money from bailing him out and sell the story? He didn't have to. He didn't have to even mess with bailing me out or me being mad at him for selling the story to TMZ. Hmm. Mm. So. Yeah. I wonder. It's a, uh, it, it, it's a question. What, what year was that? 2010. Oh, 2010. Yeah. So what'd you do when you got out? You went back to the cabin and finished I, the chocolate milk and. No, I had. The, so then I called my cousin to come come bail me out. I'm on the speaker phone, and I called my cousin Marshall, and he was like, "Will they inspect my truck when I pull in there?" <laughs> I'm like, "We're on a speaker phone, Marshall speaker phone." <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's so funny. Was that the only time you've been arrested? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, I didn't think I was going to get arrested then. I figured he would just maybe confiscate the weed and tell me to have a good day, you know? Mm -hmm. Dude, yeah. I, I, there, there's, there, there's another quote. And, and, and uh, tell me if, the, if, if you, you don't even want to remember this. But what was the <laughs> quote? Uh, if you want to get to heaven, you got to go through hell. I didn't write that. Well, right. But uh, <laughs> it was like, they, they, it was some chick. And she was like wanting to hook up with... With one of the guys. Oh, that's in my. Oh, that's in my stand-up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, a chick came. A jackass girl came to the hotel room I was in in Mexico and pounded on the door and I opened up and she had on a jackass shirt, jackass socks, shoelaces, hat, everything. And she's talking ninety miles an hour and she's like, "Where's Johnny at? Where's Johnny? I'm here to see Johnny. Where is Johnny Knoxville?" And I'm like, "He's not here. What are you talking about?" She goes, "She goes. I know he's here. I know he's your roommate, and I will need to see him right now." And she starts trying to fight her way in. So I'm said, "Catch myself, you know, physically, you know, keeping this chick out of my room." And I'm like, well, "What am I doing?" <laughs> <laughs> so I let her on in. You know, we chatted for a minute. You know, she worked her way down the proverbial jackass ladder. <laughs> Finally got down to me. <laughs> we'll just say old Johnny Knoxville never came, but I sure as heck did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. That's epic, dude. I'm so glad I asked that. And, and uh, dude, what, there, there was a time when, when you and I were in Mexico as well. And, like, I feel like I remember coming into a bathroom or something. You were like getting busy like on the floor like a dirty floor of a mexican bathroom <laughs> oh yeah yeah i got evicted from a, a mexican men's room toilet with a chick in there having sex on the toilet what? <laughs> nice <laughs> during yeah. spring break yeah yeah Two. see dude like that was on the tour yeah the tour did pay better than just 1500 bucks a show yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was perks. there was so many thousands of chicks down there dunn and i would try to find chicks that look like our buddy's girlfriends <laughs> so we could go get pictures with him, you know, and, and send back and stuff. And it was doable because there were just tens of thousands of, of women, you know. 
What, what do you mean go get pictures with that? Uh, we'll try to hook up with them, you know, with, with one of the guys that, find a chick that looks just like one of your buddy's girls, you yeah. know, and then do the, you know, hook up with them. So it looks like you're hooking up with your buddy's Right, right, right. Yeah. I wow. love I love how like uh, our podcasts have this like tendency to just get gnarlier and gnarlier. yeah we just keep pushing that line a little bit. <laughs> By the end of the Tremaine podcast, it just got gnarly, man. It got <laughs> it, it, it got and and uh, what's crazy is it did nothing incriminated Tremaine, yeah. incriminated. Um, <laughs> all right. Do so you ever kill anybody? <laughs> 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 what uh? I mean, dude, we've traveled the world over, man, which is so cool. Like, uh, Yeah, a lot of places. But not like you guys and those Wild Boys went to some yeah. random places. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Wild, Boys, Wild Boys was something else. Um, you and I, I remember, uh, like, before, like, Nitrous was really creepy and scary with me, like... I remember like being parked outside of Ralph's and stuff. Oh yeah, you remember that? I didn't think you'd ever remember that. Yeah, I what happened? I'd yeah. known Stevo like you know one shoot in Florida, so we're like you know four days, and then he came to California, and like as soon as he got there, we were hanging out, and we were behind the, on the top of the parking lot behind Ralph's doing whippets in his kind of that maroon car of his. Yeah. And and he he did him until he freaking blacked out completely, and I was like, man, this guy's pretty wild. Yeah, that was my goal every time was to huff nitrous until I, you know, passed out or, or fished out is the word. When was the first time you did nitrous? First time I did nitrous, I uh, would have been like a dead show or something. No, or? I was at my buddy Billow's apartment in like '93. And were you like nervous about doing it? And then you no, did it, and you're like, not oh even. my god, I love this. Not even, dude. I, I'm fucking yeah. I was I was stoked on it. Um. <laughs> Wonder what uh like what other fun juicy stuff like while we have you dude like what uh I mean any stories stand out with you like with the old apartment or uh, with Steve's old skate park oh apartment? I went over there one time to uh, Steve O's house because he get on those benders yeah that was he always had weed because I had to make sixteen grand and I made three hundred bucks so I go over there and he'd be passed out and I'd smoke his weed and one time I looked there and he was completely passed out and I smoked this bag of weed and I was like well what the fuck he's out so I threw that weed weed in my pocket and left next morning phone ringing Steve O you stole my fucking weed <laughs> <laughs> I was like how the hell would he even know that and I'm like, half ass try to deny it but I was already busted at that point it's like damn how can you know that then one time I passed out over there and you started kicking soccer balls off my head oh you, yeah you remember I've, that I've seen the footage <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's, it's you and macaroni you're like writing TV to movie and like yeah Preston's asleep and you guys are just like whoop boom <laughs> wow I think you do it to Mac first and then you then you both do it to Preston or something like that is the great it's decent you know I mean it's Dude, throwing so a soccer many- ball to someone's head is there's cool. thousands of hours of footage, like just in in my closet that it hasn't even. Yeah, what are you gonna do with all that? You might you gotta like. I mean, we like we we for a time we were digitizing tapes like pretty yeah, diligently. Yeah, I've gotten kind of lazy about it. But we, we've we've plucked some stuff for a video here and there. I mean, the yeah. drugs video was like. Heavily. Yeah, we've got we've like and we haven't really delved into the archives as much lately. Yeah. So we're, we're due to do I mean, we got that closet. Wu-Tang situation. With like, the, that was all yeah, in there. The entire there. thing with the Wu-Tang is on footage. Yeah. Him, like Steve smoking a cigarette on a plane and getting busted. We got that. There's a, there's some, some heavy shit. And just like <laughs> crazy tour footage. Because like you're filming crazy. a lot on the tours. Oh, can you tell the story of uh, I'm Not Leaving? Well, um... I don't understand. I, mean, I could do it for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go, 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 I mean, go from I, Miami. Well, no, no, just I'm not leaving in general. Like, uh, like with Jackass, every at a bar after at the end of the night. Yeah, yeah. Well, every Jack Jackass was always the last. You know, yeah. like in 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 the, in the the first season, it was like well, you know we didn't know if, what we were doing. You know, and then when the TV show ended, like Knoxville had quit. We didn't. We we're like so it's over. It's over. It's over. And uh, at the rap party for the Jackass TV show, um, you know, I'm, I'm on ecstasy running around, like, making out with dudes and everything. <laughs> and... Uh, we got that footage, too. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and then when the rap party ended, this started a tradition. Because Jackass was over, this is never going to be anymore, and this is our rap party, this is the last Jackass event ever. 
And so, like, we don't want to let go to it. We, we don't want to let go. We want to, like, hang on to it. And so the way that that, like, kind of manifested was that at the closing time of the rap party, you know, all right, finish them up. You got to get out of here. And, it, and it's just... I'm not leaving, dude. We're not. We're not leaving because because we want to hang on to it. You know, we don't want. And so the rule was, you're not allowed to throw punches. You know, you can't like assault anybody, but you're also not allowed to walk out on your own two feet. So we're like laying down. We're locking arms. We're like holding onto furniture. We're like like just fighting and fighting to uh, to not leave because we're like you know symbolically trying to hang on to jackass because it's over and 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 th that happened at every rap party for every project that we ever did and it was this like cool tradition it was like so meaningful and 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 there's a that, that was a, it was a game of I'm not leaving that, that legendary picture of you yeah in Florida in Miami you went to a club down there in Miami twenty five dollar cover charge to get in and they made us wait and we get in there and we were the only people in there. <laughs> and and then uh, a uh, man in a dress walks by, and <laughs> JP grabs her ass, and um, she turns around and and shoves me. So I shoved her back pretty good. And then it's like this fight started at that point. So then I look up and there's bouncers grab me, and I noticed that Whitey was there with a camera. So I was like, well, this is a golden opportunity. I'm on camera. So I just started going nuts. This was ah, <laughs> psychopath, and they drug me outside. I and, don't know if. Uh... <laughs> It doesn't even appear that you're aware there's a camera in there. You know, I don't. You're like seeing uh, red, right? Like, like your shirt is being ripped like and stuff. Photo. I've, I've seen it. But we I'm have footage of decent. I'm not leaving coming out of some club. Oh, yeah? Like you guys are, someone's filming outside the club. Like, and, I'm and you out. guys, you're getting thrown out. And then like, just like, like someone get thrown out, especially like Don, he'd get thrown out. And then you just turn around like. Just like charge, <laughs> charge back in. <laughs> Tremaine got choked out. Like this is I, all on footage. Wow, yeah. that dude, that's epic. Yeah. And, and I suppose it wasn't reserved only for rap parties. I guess we played. I'm not leaving. <laughs> yeah, like, it might have just been a Thursday night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay, I guess that was just whenever we were at the bar. <laughs> I was sitting on the curb out in front of the, the the club there, and then I look up, and JP goes flying by me, and then Knoxville goes flying by me. They're just throwing, physically tossing every yeah. single person out of there. Yeah. I'm not leaving. It's epic. It could be yeah. an epic video. I mean, it, it could be. For but sure. Tremaine, I, at one of the rap parties, a giant security guy picked up Tremaine and body slammed him hard, knocked him out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He big one. He's really good at that. Yeah, he, Tremaine, Tremaine took I'm not leaving very seriously. <laughs> he also used to play Harley Down. He was into that game. What's Harley but, Down? Where you go up to a biker bar and you kick over a row of bikes. Oh, shit. oh my God. <laughs> and, and, and then, Harley Down. Yeah. And then, 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 and then, just and then what happens next is just up to the gods. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you, wait, you're telling me that you actually did that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. saw it? No, I haven't seen it. I just, oh. I just, I just, I just, he didn't seem like a liar on that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think people know that Tremaine's kind of gnarly like that because he has the reputation of like being like evil and like making you guys do all yeah, the shit. Yeah, more a sadist than a masochist type yeah, thing. But he'll he'll <laughs> he'll go in there a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have a question, Preston. I asked this to Knoxville, but I'm curious how it applies to you. Like, when you show up on Jackass, people you grew up with and your family and friends were they like, "What the fuck is Preston doing?" Or were they like, "This makes sense." Like Preston's always been this kind of a like reckless guy not reckless just i was always in speech and debate and theater so you know I didn't right so you being plays. on a tv show yeah. but you being on a tv show like doing yeah, stunts, stunts and getting any shot type of stunt and... was a shock for sure yeah you know, okay I'm not a stunt guy by any means yeah still not shit was <laughs> that like <laughs> when you signed up for jackass was it like i'm probably just going to be eating raw eggs and shit or did you realize that you're going to like take some hits I knew there was going to be some stunts but I didn't think it, I thought the series might last for a season, you know, on MTV, because MTV, you know, right. and I thought hopefully I could get a candy bar commercial out of it or something, you know, get enough recognition to, to you know, to get some commercials. Mm -hmm. You know, just, a little, I never thought that the show would take off. What you know, was the never. stunt that you're like, wait, what? Like, I have to do that? You know, like, oh shit, they're like, did they kind of slowly like, human introduce you ball. to shit? Yeah. Yeah, where they, I slammed in the stuff as a. Uh -huh, right, 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 right. And then were, were you in on the magnet thing? No, no, that was Dave. That was okay. The, what's the magnet thing? It was like at the junkyard. They've got a magnet that'll like pick up a whole car yeah. kind of thing. And they had him in a metal suit, like the Tin Man, and mm. they pick him up mm -hmm. like. Uh, and it wasn't really that like crazy. 
But it's cartoony. Like, those are the bits yeah. I really like. Like, you chasing Wee Man around. Nobody's getting hurt. It's not even that crazy, but it's right. just, it's cartoony. It's so and funny. Dave England is, I think, like, just, his creativity is just so fucking great. Man. Oh, he's like, one of the tops, for sure. Yeah. A, a good thing that it happened, it sounds weird to say it, like it but the, a good thing for me was when uh, Dunn and PJ, or John and Knox, wrecked that golf cart in the beginning of the first movie because that's when everybody went we got to slow everything down and then it went to Wee Man and I for more of some fun stuff you know yeah. but because I did that I don't know if you know at that exact moment things were going big like it was yeah, just yeah. getting bigger and bigger that, that, and bigger that golf cart thing yeah. was referred to as the incident yeah right like it was like that was like whoa that's when it was like all of a sudden oh who got knocked out was Knoxville knocked out yeah, yeah. so Knoxville was knocked out Knoxville's been knocked unconscious a lot yeah yeah, but it's really intense. I remember they're like, nobody touch him. And they're like running yeah. over. So up until that point, you guys were just getting lucky over and over. And it was like, nothing bad can happen. And then that was kind of like well, we still the bummer. Like <laughs> yeah, sure, right. sure. You can't go into it thinking that, you know, you ain't going to make it. Of course. But you also can't think of it as we're making this big movie. You make these guys laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Keep it small. Mm -hmm. Make the people there laugh. Don't think of it as, ah, oh, this is for you know, international right. audience. Mm. No, you make right, the, right, your right. boys laugh. And if they're laughing, that's where you want to be. Yeah. Right. Do you guys have any bits that you did that never made it to air where you're like, what the fuck? Why those epic? Why didn't they use that? Uh, just more p parts of bits that they cut out lines and stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But my, my, my experience is that even if I think, oh man, that shit should be in, that shit should be in, that the, the collective of Knoxville, Tremaine, and Spike Jones. Like, each of those guys as individuals can absolutely be wrong. But all three of them put together, once they arrive at a decision, a consensus decision between all of them, I think it's bulletproof. I don't think they're ever wrong. Well, that opener on Forever is just... It's oh, one my of, God. That's one of the funniest things I've ever seen on film, ever. You know, I, I saw, I it, I saw an early agree. cut, and it still had all, like, blue screens in it, and, like, you know, I, I had this vision or this idea that it was going to be all cleaned up, and then when I actually saw it with, like, the, the sticks that were controlling the arms, yeah. like, it kind of... I was like, why are there sticks in there? You oh, know? I liked it. I liked the sticks. I like when they pull out and they show, like... It's just Chris's dick for the first time. Like right. the so way that whole thing was put together. We fought together. hard on that. We fought. We yeah. fought really hard on that. We were with Tremaine. That yeah. you, that like you've, we've got all this invested in there. You know, like the the intense music. Like the you've you've created this like intensity, and then to just snap out of it, to peel back the curtain, to show Chris standing there. Like you've built you built all this up, and you just mm. destroy it. You dash it. You make it all go away, and now you've ruined everything that you built up so funny i loved it and and, and spike was the spike was uh no we got to reveal it we got to let him in on it and and tremaine fought we were with tremaine we were fighting for it tremaine and was on your side Tre well we were on tremaine's side gotcha. saying don't break what we don't break that energy that's mm -hmm. that's been built up and uh you know to their credit it's not like one person's more important than the other they just take the questions like that to test audiences mm. and by testing by testing audiences over and over and over they had undeniable proof that spike was right epic yeah he was totally right yeah he's not always right you know but uh but he's pretty much always yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Only pretty much all the time. We <laughs> asked for the Dum Dum Game 2 was one we fought for. I was surprised to see the final cut of the movie that the Dum Dum Game was like the like up front, up top. Yeah, it went from not on there to being one of the top bits. Right. And Which we also the, fought for Zach's... The trivia game. Um, yeah. Hang glider, yeah, 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 too, yeah. which is just a no-brainer. That, you know? that wasn't no, supposed, that wasn't going to be in the cut at all. Zach with this kite jumping onto the cactus, and and uh, and we fought for it. And the next thing you know, it's like a movie post. Yeah, that's it. yeah. But do you guys want a bit in the front of the movie, or at the end of the movie, or in the middle? Or does it matter? I mean, oh, we're, we're happy with where they're, they're like yeah. the, the pacing of like how it goes. Like they they always get that right. So yeah, because the Silence of the Lambs bit was like number two, and that was like the heaviest yeah. one. It, that, that's the hardest I think I've ever laughed watching some jackass shit. I agree. Dave and Aaron. Golly, Dave and Aaron. Yeah. Oh, that's convenient. It. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting. Yeah. You know? the door. And Aaron's hiding out. And he's like, Aaron, you got to answer me. Zach was <laughs> killing me during that because he's like, I don't know. He just had belief, like I can get out of this, you know. Like I know, I know what to do, you know. 
And then he just hits his head and he hits the fucking mouse traps. Like he explored everything more than anybody, yeah. like all his options. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. It's such a special thing, man. It fucking Jackass was lightning in a bottle, man. You know? I, I really don't believe that anything like that had ever happened before and I don't think anything like that could ever happen again, kind of. We were in that dark room and I went from defensive to offensive. I got tired of it. So I started looking around for weapons and stuff. You found I a trying, mop? Trying, yeah, I, I, I had a mop that I used and I had an afghan that I used for a while. But as I was in there, I was like, why the heck is Chris naked? I was like, there's a naked Pontius in this dark room with all this horrible shit going on. It's like, what the heck? How long were you in there for? I, probably three minutes, seven minutes. I don't, it was all just... Didn't know what was happening or going on. So funny. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, fuck, man. Um... I, I, I love you, man. I love you like crazy. Thank you for having me in your house. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's it's pretty rad. And uh, I, I got to say, I feel really weird about the idea of going on tour and, and you're the driver. But uh, at the same time, I can see how it makes all kinds of sense. It's kind of funny. I think it's I think it, 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 it's epic, you know. And we could have you, like you know, like opening the show. So, uh, you know, it's like my opener is fucking Preston, and he's also driving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like you know like we 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 aspire to be shooting content all the time. That's too, what I'm so. saying. Yeah. Yeah, but today was fucking epic, dude. The the oh stunt with the kid. Yeah. yeah we got to hurry up and get that out. Shout out to Peter. No, a guy, one of my friends owns it. You and your friends? Yeah. Owns oh, what? Yeah. Prestonlacy.com. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. And I've just have never had the gumption to try to you know to do anything with it yeah well if you become the driver you're gonna have a fuckload of content oh yeah i need to, to get there. some merch going again for sure yeah for like, sure man this is merch selling merch at shows like uh it is the way to be um and, and is it, are you still saving up money to open a animal sanctuary yeah fuck yeah but we want to do it in canada so we can't like we've not been able to cross the border looking at properties like crazy like uh, british columbia um so yeah we want everyone to follow your instagram is it still the real Preston yeah, Lacey? Yeah, the school teacher in Kentucky is Preston Lacey. So, so yeah. it's real Preston Lacey. Yeah, at Instagram. And then it's just at Preston Lacey on Twitter. At Preston Lacey on Twitter. Yeah, that school teacher in Kentucky told me, Preston Lacey, he said, my life was great until you came along. <laughs> he goes, now they call me Mr. Jackass. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. I like it. So does he, does he say that like tongue in cheek? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. No, he's, he's super nice guy, super happy. It's just a name, he don't care. Right. Well, then give us your fucking handle, you asshole. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're not there, in the entertainment industry. There, there was a guy who had uh, Stevo.com. I mean, there was, and then there, there was a guy who had at Steve on Instagram. Well, there was a. You were officially Steve O. Right? I used to be officially Steve O, and then this guy, like, I met him and he was cool, and he just gave it to During me. the series, wow. there was a guy from San Diego named Jack Ass who sued the MTV uh, and yeah. ev Viacom and everybody, saying that they stole his name. His last name that was Ass. Yeah, that got dismissed like a yeah, motherfucker though. Right out the door. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody follow fucking. Preston on social media. Yeah, and come to a bucket list tour because they might see Preston and, fucking at the show. And go see the number three movie in the United States. That was number two. Oh, well, there you go. And we made number two last week. I was adjusting for when this comes out next week. You think you think we'll be kicked down to no. three? Yeah, no way. We'll probably four or five at that point. There's new stuff coming out so much. Uh, but no, we, we did good. We we did great. <laughs> Yeah. Unbelievable! How good I mean, the, the narrative is even like way better than we did. Yeah. So yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. No, people weren't wanting to go to those theaters, you know. Yeah. At all. all right. Thank you guys. Thank yeah, you so man. much. Yeah, thank dude. You. I Love you, dude. Hope right I didn't let you down. <laughs> Not at all, man. It's great. Not in the least. Yeah, dudes, man. Couple things. It looks like Preston Lacey actually is going to be our bus driver. We got to uh, figure this one out. Wow, that would be insane. And I know some of you guys um, have been leaving comments like, oh, dude, where are the, all the Alba ads? Because I had COVID and couldn't go to the movie premiere and, and because of all the stuff going on at the movie, we missed two weeks and we were committed to sponsors to run in. So we had to pack in all these extra ads. But now we're caught up, so it's back to business as usual. And as always, thank you guys for sticking around to the very end. Um, it's pretty crazy, man. Like I've been uploading to my main YouTube channel every single week, podcast every single week, grueling tour schedule. It's uh, a pretty blistering pace that I'm keeping, man, and I'm super stoked. Yeah, man. 
It's work, work, work. Now, time to go bone, bone, bone. <laughs> so take care, everybody.